How's it going everyone? I'm back again. This is JC with JC Collins Racing. And if you have a Logitech G29, we're gonna be talking about this. And what is this? This is the power unit that comes with the Logitech G29. What I want you to do, I want you to go to your G29, take this thing and toss it out the window. I'll tell you why in a second. Hey everyone, as I stated before, today we're talking about the Logitech G29 yet again, and we're talking about a mod that can make the Logitech G29 have more, well, I'm not gonna say more, but better force feedback. What do I mean by better force feedback? I mean force feedback that actually gives you the information that you're looking for through the sim in terms of road textures, in terms of feedback of what your wheels are doing, those sorts of things, you get more of what they call fidelity. You get more information versus the strength where your wheel is just clipping and making a whole bunch of noise. And I'm any of you that have a Logitech G29, G29, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So how do we achieve this? Well, this is how we achieve it. Like, as I stated before, this is the original power unit for the Logitech G29. It is rated for one amp, at 24 volts. So, I mean, you really wouldn't think too much about that. So, but what we've done is one of my subscribers by the name of Equal Equinox, great, great subscriber, by the way, thank you. He's recommended that, hey, you know, if you upgrade your power unit to about five amps, it eliminates a lot of the clicking and you get much more fidelity through the Logitech G29. So when he suggested that, I thought to myself, huh, why not check it out? And sure enough, it's a, it's a cheap mod, it's, it's quick and easy, it plugs right into the Logitech G29. You don't have to do any special modding, it plugs up just like the original. So, and it only costs about $25. So at $25, at this point, it's like, well, what do I have to lose? And I have to tell you, um, the results are pretty impressive. And uh, we'll talk more about that later, but, in, uh, but I just kinda wanted to get into the science a little bit about why you could potentially get more force feedback without changing your motor and without really increasing your voltage, you know, just by increasing your amperage and how that can affect your overall experience and level of immersion. As we can see here, I have both power units side by side and right off the bat, you can see a few similarities, a few differences that kind of stand out. So on the left here is the five amp custom unit that I bought online. And on the right, we have the Logitech G29 power unit that comes with uh, in the box with the unit. So one of the biggest similarities that I'm really happy about is that the connectors are very similar. They're the same size, look like to be the same connection. There's a slight difference on the inside here. You can see that the power unit on the left with the five amp has like this kind of two pin, connection that goes on the inside versus the Logitech, which has more of a solid kind of ring on the inside for, it looks like you can get potentially a more solid connection there. But one of the biggest differences I noticed immediately was the wall outlet portion of the cord that goes into the transformer here and into the wall outlet. As you can see this, if any of you all have an Xbox, it kind of reminds me of that. And then, as we can see here with the Logitech G29, it's more of a two pin connection versus the three pin connection. And I mean, these pins here just look more, you know, it just seems to be thicker and a little bit more robust versus the, the rod like pins on the inside here. So, oh, those are some of the biggest differences I see. Also the length in the cord. So this Logitech cord is really long here actually. And it gives you quite a bit of length to play with when you're connecting to your system versus this one here is a little bit short. Um, I don't know the length off the top of my head. I did not measure it, but it's, it's visibly, I mean, you hold these two right next to each other. It's visibly shorter. All right, so with that being said, I wanna get into a little bit about how the theory of more amperage can translate into more power, which 
more power could potentially mean more torque. Okay, so I kind of wrote up a bit of a small explanation of how the theory works when it comes to um, direct motors, direct power. Even though this is an alternating current, it receives an alternating current and transforms into a direct current, I'm not going to go too deep into how alternating current works because I'm pretty sure I will mess that up. But seeing as though direct current is very simple to explain and calculate, and we can kind of draw some conclusions here. So as we can see here, I have labeled at the top, we have um, your power, which is measured in watts, your current, which is measured in amps, and your voltage, which is measured in V. Now, typically, the way you would calculate the amount of power that a direct motor can produce, you take your current and you multiply it by your voltage. We can see that there's a direct correlation here with your, with your current and your voltage, which means that if you increase one, your power is going to increase no matter what. So even if we keep our current the same, and we increase our voltage, we would increase our power because you multiply these two together and vice versa. If your voltage stays the same, which is what's happening in our case here, but you increase your current, you increase your power. Now more power can in turn, most times translate into more torque. I'm not gonna get into the torque calculations on this one, but for the most part, just know that the more current or the more voltage you have will translate into more power, which in this case, what could give us more, I'm not going to say more realistic force feedback, but can definitely give us a bit more powerful feedback and probably a bit more fidelity through the G29. So that's what we wanted. That's what we want to um, test out here. So I made a little note to myself and for you all here that says that, you know, with all this, that therefore, as I increases, P increases. And I put a little note that says that V has to increase, but that's absolutely incorrect as we just as I just stated a moment ago that we're just gonna try to scratch that out. V does not have to increase for your power to increase. As long as I increases, your power has to increase. Since there's a direct correlation right here between your current times your voltage gives you more power. So with that being said, I want to actually go ahead and connect this power unit to the Logitech G29 and just take a fourth spin on a few of the sims that I play the most like Formula One 2021, uh, by the way, I have a review coming for that as well, so stay tuned. And I wanted to test it out on a Settle Corsa Competition as well as a Settle Corsa. And with that being said, let's get this out of the way and see how this thing performs. Okay, so here we are in Formula One 2021, and um, this is going to be the first sim that I actually want to try out the new power unit with. Um, it's one of the games that I like to play the most, and I, I'm actually going to have a review on this game, or I'm sorry, this sim, coming soon, so stick around for that. One thing that I did notice immediately once I connected the power unit to the Logitech G29 is that the power cord itself is substantially shorter. And I'm, for both pieces, the portion that goes from the wall outlet to the power unit is roughly about three feet, and then from the power unit to the Logitech G29 is roughly about another three feet, three, maybe four feet. It's not very long at all, so that's something you might want to keep in mind if you decide to order this power unit. Now, uh, one thing I forgot to mention while I was talking about how the math works when it comes to calculating uh, the output of a DC motor uh, is, you know, I just want to go through a rough calculation. So with the Logitech G29, the power unit is rated for one amp at 24 volts. So based on the calculations that we talked about before with our formula, P equals IV, where P is your power output in watts, I is your current in amps, and V is your voltage in V in volts. You take your one amp times your 24 volts, that gives you roughly 25 watts of output direct current. Now, if we do, I said 25, I meant 24. Now, if we do that same calculation with the upgraded power unit at five amps, you have five amps times 24 volts, which gives you roughly 120 watts output. Now, will we actually achieve that full output with the, the motors inside of the Logitech G29? I'm not entirely sure. Will we burn out the motors? Possibly. But you know what? I'm willing to give it a shot, just kind of try it out. But I will say to try this at your own risk as well. Um, I'm not entirely sure what, these motor, what the motor is rated for inside of the Logitech G29, but I am excited to see exactly what type of result we're going to get. So with that being said, 
I'm going to hop into Lewis Hamilton's Mercedes here and do a few laps. And then after that, we'll hop into a set of Corsa Competition and then do a couple of laps and then hop into a set of Corsa and do a couple of laps. So with that being said, let's get into it and let's see what we get. Okay, so I just decided to do just a quick time trial at Silverstone uh, in Lewis Hamilton's Mercedes. And um, I'm not going to do, you know, I'm not going to go too crazy. I just definitely going to go out on track and just get a few things done. But, you know, before we do that, I'm actually going to change my force feedback settings because I typically run my force feedback settings, uh, my force feedback gain, I should say. I typically run it on this on this sim at roughly, as you can see, 75% gain. Uh, for the Logitech G29 for me, that's actually a pretty good game. But for the first lap, I'm just going to leave it at 75%. I'm going to do two laps at 75% and then I'm going to crank it all the way up to 100% or let me see, what is this max out? Okay, 150%. All right, so with that being said, let's get out on the track. I don't even care about my settings right now. just want to try this out. Okay, here we go. All right, so off the jump, there's really not that much of a difference. Well, actually, let me see, coming into this turn here. Okay, still got a bit of clipping. I will say this, it does feel slightly smoother, but very slightly. Very slightly. Go over rumble strips intentionally here. I will say the rumble strips felt rather smooth right there, but let's see. Okay, it's fairly smooth there too. Little to no clipping. Let's try this one. Yeah, I don't even feel that. And that was the infamous corner, the controversial corner between Hamilton and Verstappen. Let me, guys, let me know what your thoughts are on that. Do you guys think that Hamilton was in the wrong? Do you think Verstappen was in the wrong? Do you think that Hamilton deserved the penalty? Do you think that Hamilton deserved to be disqualified? Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. I'm very interested to hear what your guys' thoughts are. All right, so. So far, so far, I gotta be honest, I don't really feel anything. It, the feedback feels solid in terms of, you know, car control. It does feel responsive. It doesn't feel floaty, but I'm not really feeling any of the road textures or anything. But then again, I am on Silverstone. It's a fairly smooth track. But going over the rumble strips and things, I'm not really feeling anything. Let's hit this one hard. Yeah, literally nothing there. Okay. This is I'm, just, I'm just like hitting curbs just because at this point, just to see if I can feel anything. Let's go over this one. Little to nothing. You know what, it could be because I run my settings so low with the G29 because I'm trying to avoid clipping that maybe with this upgraded power unit, it's just not even registering because of the fact that it can handle so much more. So maybe it is working in providing more fidelity and I'm just not seeing it. Maybe I need to crank it up a little bit, but we'll see. But I feel like that's opposite of what you get from direct drive wheels. And don't roast me on my sloppy lap. I'm just literally just trying to get some feedback happening here. Let's see, on the grass. You know what, yeah, let's go on the grass. Yeah, it like doesn't even, res oh, there's a little bit, but nothing really. Okay, enough of that. Let's go back to the pits. Turn to garage. All right. So initial impressions. I don't really feel anything differently. I mean, but my force feedback settings are fairly weak uh, for this sim. Typically with this sim, with the way I have it set, you can still get a, a lot of clipping 
uh, with the just the base unit for the G29. But you know what? I'm actually going to crank it up to see how far this thing can go before it actually gets to a point of just obnoxious clipping. And I'm going to see if it feels any better. So I'm not just going to turn up the gain. I'm going to turn up everything. I'm just going to see exactly what it just feels like. I have a feeling that this is going to be insane. I just want to see how much this wheel clips <laughs> with this uh, power unit or if it clips at all. I heard through the grapevine that it will reduce the amount of clipping, but let's see. I, with everything maxed out, there's no way it, there's no way that it won't, there's no way that it will avoid clipping. So let's um, save to that control scheme. All right, let's go out, let's do another lap and see what, and see how this feels. All right, so far, so far, so good. It's very smooth, very similar to what it was before. Yeah, I'm still not feeling anything. That's weird. It doesn't clip though. I'm doing very sloppy laps. Yeah, but, oh, there we go. Felt a little something there. Nothing there. You know, I'm just really starting to think that this just isn't the right track for this test. I need a track that's really bumpy. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not feeling anything. Hmm. You know, I don't know if, if the Logitech itself is regulating the amount of power that's going to the motors or if I just burned one of the motors out, but <laughs> I really don't feel much of a difference here. I'm not really feeling any of the on track effects. And for all I know, this could be working perfectly fine. But I have, as you guys, as you all saw, I maxed out all of the settings. You know, it hits us. I'm just gonna go off track. Let's just see what happens. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I didn't really feel anything. All right, I'm in a gravel. Well, almost in a gravel. Let's go on the grass. Yeah, run stuff over. All right, so there's minor clipping. You know, I will say the, the feedback did feel pretty good right there going off road. Like I actually felt the wheel giving me some resistance, but very smoothly and very, how can I put it? It was, it wasn't like break your wrist, snap back, but it was definitely like, oh, I can definitely feel what's happening. Let's try it again. Oh yeah. Now I feel it. Okay. I think we're just at the wrong track. With that being said, I'm gonna exit out of this and we're gonna go to a different track. Yeah, during the curves, the wheel does, I mean, you guys probably can't really see how it's resisting um, my motions, but it's actually giving pretty good solid feedback. And I'm just gonna hit this curve as hard as I can yeah it actually does feel pretty good like when when the front wheels actually kick you can actually really feel what's happening instead of it just like clipping like uncontrollably and then you know you just let's see oh wow yeah oh see like right okay yeah you can feel it right there you see how i was able to catch uh the slide typically i would not have been able to i wouldn't have been able to catch that but I actually did feel uh, the resistance and the, and, and the feedback. So it, you know, it's, it's there actually. But I noticed it seems like it's only there, hit these curves. It's only there with extreme, yeah. You can really only feel it with extreme changes in the road. Subtle changes in the road, it's just non-existent. 
versus before with the the base power unit i kind of felt a lot of the subtle changes in the rope but it came in the form of clipping now it doesn't come in the form of clipping but it just comes as a little spurt in the wheel like i can feel it almost as a vibration but the wheel itself doesn't really doesn't really kick let me run over these curves oh yeah i felt it there that was a good one okay this may actually be better overall the wheel itself is definitely more quiet it's not waking up the neighbors like it typically does let's see oh yeah it actually does make sense let's go on the grass yeah i can feel that and for all of you who are screaming at me right now who are like hey there's no uh damage yeah, it's time trial mode. That's what happens on F1 2020. In time trial, you just don't have damage. Okay, I'm going to stop it there, and I'm going to go to Settle Course of Competition. As we can see here, like I said, you can kind of feel it in the extreme cases, but uh, we'll talk more about that in the wrap-up. So with that being said, let's hop over to ACC and try it out there. Okay, so here we are in a settled course of competition. Uh, gotta say, this is probably my favorite sim at the moment. I love this one so much. Anyway, I'll talk more about that later. But um, we're just gonna go and set up, kind of do the same thing that we just did with uh, Formula One 2021. I'll show you guys what I have set for my force feedback settings and then do a lap or two and then come back and actually crank everything up to the max and just see if there's any difference. So let's hop into it. Okay, so as we can see here, I have my gain set to about 88%, my minimum force at 10%, and my dynamic damping, I just get rid of that completely, and then road effects, I have at about 23%. These settings work fairly, they work fairly well for me, and I get a good amount of feedback, and just, you know, good overall feel of what the car is doing. So with all that being said, let's hop on in, and I have the perfect track in mind this time. We are gonna go to Brands Hatch, a very bumpy track, and we'll completely test all of your force feedback settings, no matter what car you're driving. So that being said, I gotta set the practice and let's hop into it. All right, so I'm not gonna worry too much about any specific settings. Uh, you know, right now I'm in the uh, Ferrari 48 GT3. Right now I'm, I'm loving this car. It's like my favorite in this game right now, but um, I keep calling it a game, it's a sim. Everybody, please don't kill me. All right, so with that being said, let's get out on the track. So far, it doesn't feel any different. Feels kind of light, actually. Oh, I retract my previous statement. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. It is a huge difference. Okay, wow. It is such a huge difference that I just ran off the road. I couldn't even, it was such a surprise. Wow, you can really, wow. I can actually feel when the front wheels go light. I mean, typically you can in an ACC, but this is on a whole other level actually. As you can see, I didn't even do anything to my force feedback settings. All I did was just change the power unit. I can feel every bump in the road. And that, if you guys are looking at my hands, you can see that I'm like having to like really fight here. Like you can really tell the difference. Okay. Oh. This feels completely, this feels completely different. This does not feel like ACC. Well, at least in, with my frame of reference. Holy crap. It's actually tough to keep the wheels straight. Okay. And the best part about it, there's no clipping. Oh, I can get used to this. All right, I'm just gonna hit this inside curb here because, oh yes. You really feel how much the, 
you really feel how much the front wheels are fighting the, the car. This is, wow. I'm getting so much more information right now as how the wheels are contacting the road. And all I've done was a $25 mod that goes directly onto your Logitech G29. Okay. Oh, okay, there we go. That was a little clip in there when I locked up. Wow, yeah, you can really feel it when the wheels go light. So I'm gonna, on the next corner, I'm, not this one, but the next one, I'm gonna lock my front brakes intentionally just to get a feel for what's gonna happen. Lock. Holy crap. Okay, that, that was pretty, that was pretty amazing. So, you really won't feel that much of a difference in F-121, but in the set of course of competition, it is like night and day. And I'm sure you all saw how much this thing was kicking and fighting me. It's like night and day, but it was very smooth very smooth at the same time. I don't even have to up, I don't even have to max out all the settings just to see how it, it plays out. So with that being said, I'm gonna hop over to Acetyl Corsa and try it out there and see if we get a similar feeling. Okay, so here we are in Content Manager for Acetyl Corsa and I'm pretty sure that most of you who Players that uh, sim on a subtle course uh, you're very familiar with uh, content manager. And here we have the settings for my force feedback. I'm not gonna go too in depth with it because I have it set very similar to that of ACC, but I do notice that AC is definitely, has a bit better force feedback in my opinion, but uh, I still love ACC's force feedback. So same, same deal, I have my gain set to about 88%. There's no filter. My minimum force is at 10%. Curb effect, 20%. Road effect, 30. Slip effect, 20. ABS, 21%, roughly. 20% is a really odd number. I don't know why I have it there, but it, it works for me. And um, yeah, so with that being said, I'm actually going to go out and try out Silverstone again with another uh, formula hybrid 2021 just to kind of recreate what we were seeing with Formula One 2021 to see if there's actually a difference or if it's literally just Formula 2021 is not great with force feedback. So with that being said, let's hop into it. Okay, and here we are, the beautiful Formula Hybrid 2021 and all of its Acetyl Course of Beautiful Glory. I think Acetyl Course is one of the best looking Sims out here. I mean, it, the detail is just remarkable. Okay, anyway, let's get to it. I'm only gonna do a couple of laps. Let's see how this thing looks. Whoa. Okay, yeah, right off the bat, it is. Okay. Yeah, right off the bat, it was uh, pretty good at detecting wheel spin. You know what? It actually feels kind of light. Oh, never mind. I feel the bumps. Wow, it's actually pretty responsive in terms of the force feedback. I do feel the bumps in the road and I can feel when the front wheels are going light. And uh, I can really feel if I'm overdriving the car. That was the biggest thing I wanted to say about ACC. You can really feel that you're overdriving. And yes, I know I slowed down too much at that corner. So what? Oh yeah. I really felt all of the bumps in the road, all of the the ways that the wheel wants to the wheels want to fight back. So I'm gonna leave it at this. You can It definitely feels like I'm getting more of that dynamic range of what the wheel is capable of doing now that it has a bit of a boost. Yeah. 
Let's go on the gravel. Okay, well, sand feels like sand. That felt soft. Oh, I was able to catch that. Yeah, I feel the curve pretty well there. Oh yeah, I can feel the curves and the imperfections of the road very, very nicely. You know what, I just, over, oh my goodness, hitting the softest curve right there was like death. But you know what, I definitely feel more confident in controlling the vehicle with this, uh, with this upgrade in power, this power boost. I can feel with I, I can actually feel where the limit is. And that is what you need when it comes to your wheels. Oh yeah. I can definitely feel the limit a lot more cleanly. The wheel doesn't clip. Helps me with my concentration. And then it 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 fights just the right amount that I like it. But you know what? I'm gonna... I'm gonna have to tweak it a little bit. I can see that now. I may be able to go... I may be able to go a bit stronger on the uh, force feedback, actually. Oh, yeah. This feels really, really good. I'm come to a, to a stop here. Okay. Um, same as the Settle Corsa Competition. I don't think I need to tweak the force feedback settings to test it any further. Okay, so the major takeaways from this thing is that does it increase force feedback? Yes, it does. Does it increase it by a lot? That depends, I would say, it depends on the sim. Uh, and with that being said, with depending on the sims, I actually went back and did another run with Formula One 2021, and I realized that the force feedback settings that I had updated were not enabled. I changed them in the settings, but did not enable them. So if you're playing Formula One 2021, that's something you need to keep in mind, is that just because you update your settings does not mean that they are automatically enabled so anyway the results coming from that were actually pretty good it wasn't as staggering as a settle corsa competition but it was pretty noticeable like the the force feedback was not wrist breaking but it was definitely smoother it was stronger it was way more responsive in the, in what you felt uh, in, the, in the road textures and things of that nature, you, you, you definitely got more fidelity coming coming from the sim and, and throughout through the wheel itself. So definitely a, a noticeable upgrade. When it comes to ACC, oh man, that was that was complete night and day going from the way it was originally to having that extra four amps. It just makes a complete world of difference. I was able to feel every single bump and crack on brand hatch and just locking up the wheels just that quick experiment it really felt like i was in a car almost like i was hydroplaning that's what it felt like when the wheel just goes completely light and the thing is acc is also pretty good about uh going light uh under heavy braking loads or if you're overdriving the car things of that nature you're you know you're scrubbing the front wheels but it's really exaggerated with this and it feels just more immersive overall. Um, and AC, we like I stated earlier, was definitely a noticeable difference. It felt natural almost in AC. Uh, it didn't feel too much or too little, but it definitely felt more responsive. It felt more realistic, and there was a, there was a lot less clipping than what you would normally get. And while we're on the subject of clipping, you won't completely get rid of clipping with this, but I will say that the clipping has been reduced quite a bit. Uh, and that was across all three of the Sims. 
I noticed that it was more pronounced in Formula One 2020, 2021 after I actually enabled this, the force feedback settings. But it just takes a little bit of fine tuning because I noticed that the more I worked with the, uh, the road texture setting uh, in Formula One 2021 that it made a bigger difference. It wasn't so much the gain, it was more so those canned effects that you get from the road textures and curbs and things of that nature. So would I recommend this upgrade, this mod to the Logitech G29? Uh, the answer is yes, I would strongly recommend this. Is, you know, especially if you're the type of person that you've had the logic, you've been in a Logitech ecosystem for quite a while. You don't really have the cash that to upgrade to either Thrustmaster, Fanatec, Simucube, and you just want a more realistic force feedback. Absolutely. It is definitely worth the $25. And in terms of heat generation from the, the extra amperage coming into the base, I didn't even notice a big difference. I, I simmed for about an additional two hours after afterwards, and there was no noticeable heat. There was no noticeable, you know, anything. It, it felt pretty good. So will you burn out your motors over time with this? Potentially. So definitely, like with any mod, do it at your own risk, but it definitely is noticeable. I would definitely give this about a four out of five. And with that being said, I'm gonna leave it there. I want to give a huge, huge, huge Shout out to one of my subscribers for recommending this mod. All the credit goes to Equal Equinox for recommending this. Thank you again for recommending this. It was definitely an eye-opening experience for the Logitech G29. It definitely completely changes the game. So I will leave a link in the description below to this power unit. So if you decide you wanna pick it up for yourself, if you all enjoyed this one, a like would be very much appreciated. If you didn't like it, go ahead and dislike it. But if you do dislike it, please leave me some constructive feedback to let me know how I can improve to make this a much better experience for you all. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon to get more notifications of my latest and greatest content. And with that, I hope you all have a great day. Thank you for tuning in and I'll see you in the next one.